Greetings folks, Flying Doctor here, hope you're doing okay. This is a very quick guide as to how you can jump into the H160 and get flying as soon as possible. It's also the quickest introduction that I can do at depth into the autopilot. If you've seen my uh, tutorials on the H145, this is similar but much more refined. Great aircraft, well worth the investment. Welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. Greetings folks, quicker tutorial I hope. The point of this is to help people who've purchased the H160 get to grips as soon as possible with the autopilot. Uh, flying helicopters is something of a challenge uh, with multiple inputs that you need to balance and great sensitivities as well. The H160 is a very stable aircraft but it very much feels sometimes that as you fly you need to get the equivalent of uh, patting your head, rubbing your stomach in a circular motion and jumping up and down or dancing at the same time. And that's a bit frustrating when you start out. You want to be able to jump in, fly around, have some fun and then learn more about how to control the aircraft later. So what I've done is I've set the aircraft to what you would expect if you just said that you wanted to depart from a runway. We're at Aberdeen here and I'm going to walk you through the autopilot and the initial things that you can do to get yourself stable. Um, just some things to note firstly, we have got some landing gear, you can leave it down, it's a bit rude, um, but you're going to take your landing gear up. Also you've got a park brake that is just here and uh, you're able to click that on or off. I leave it um, on. Okay that's the main thing, we'll just uh, get rid of that, it's a bit irritating there. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to increase our throttle which is the equivalent of raising the collective collectives down here and then most of the focus that I want us to look at is around the link between the tablet here and uh, the flight display here in terms of what's happening to the pitch altitude speed of the aircraft okay so we'll get going right the first thing is that if you want to access the autopilot when you're on the ground it won't show fully but you click on the top here near the time and you'll get this display here okay and the next thing is the full autopilot modes will not be visible until you're slightly off the ground. And I must I must apologise in a way here because I think there are some presets that I've got set in the tablet. Um, and I'll try and reproduce what you would see if you started it from cold because the tablet remembers the presets that you've had before for your altitudes and whatever. Okay, so I'm going to increase the collective and you're going to see me click here on um, the hover mode and that will stabilize the aircraft straight away. By the way if you are looking for uh, something more in depth you can have a look at the H145 tutorials that I've done on the autopilot. This is um, identical but the hype have kind of continually refined their, their autopilot. So whether you're flying in the H145 or the H160 the principles are much the same apart from there's a vertical uh, takeoff mode that is uh, available in the H160. So I'm going to increase the um, throttle now. I'm using throttle because that's what might be in front of you but I'm going to lift the collective and you'll see me click on hover straight away. Also notice how we're going to see an increase in the power here on the left. Okay so increase our power and you can just feel the aircraft beginning to lift and then up we go and then straight away I'm clicking on hover. Okay. Now, for some reason, I think this is preloaded in. Um, I have also a blue height button. Uh, I'm going to take that off, and what happens now is that I am hovering, so there's no latitude uh, movement. I'm just going up and down, putting it in the simplest way uh, possible. If I increase the throttle, I'll raise the collective, I go higher, and if I decrease the collective, I go lower and you'll notice that this is quite a sensitive operation here. Okay, if I want to um, hold the altitude, uh, I can click Alt here. So if you click on this, it'll hold the altitude for us. Okay, immediately you can see a green marker here. That's the point where we clicked out and the autopilot has noted that's where we need to stop. Also, something that's really important, 
when you're flying uh, regularly, an easy mistake to make is that you need to watch where your collective is. Okay, now see these two little double lines here. Notice how if I push on my throttle, the double white line goes up or down, but the aircraft, as you can see, isn't moving anywhere. The reason for that, of course, is the autopilot is uh, managing the uh, power itself. Now, the trouble is, if I come out of alt mode now and I have my throttle set uh, higher than the autopilot throttle, you'll see that the aircraft will jump uh will jump up. So I'll just demonstrate this. It's something very common that you spot that you spot in your flying. So if I click on you can see immediately it's going up. Okay, well what if we didn't want to do that? Um, we've now clicked Alt again here to hold our altitude. But what if we want to come out of Alt, happy with our altitude and then fly forward? Well here we go. If you take this read out here, if you look at where this uh, double little white line is, just try and get the double white line onto the yellow, roughly there. That means that the uh, collective is matched to the same collective as the autopilot. Or we'll use the word throttle afterwards because we're used to thinking about throttle. If I now remove alt from the alt hold from the autopilot, you'll see that we're stable. Okay, so that's a really important first lesson just moving on. But we'll hold the altitude there and we'll work through what some of these uh, options are. We're in automatic hover and you can see below we have some options already. Now these are usually mapped onto the, uh, the stick that is here and they can be mapped onto some quite sophisticated controllers that are available for flight simulator but the thing I love about the Hype products is that they actually allow you to just use your mouse button which is great for tutorials. You can map all of these and there's H145 tutorials that I've done on this already. But you can see some options here when we're in hover mode. Um, uh, uh, so we've got GTCH, left, right, up and down. So this is the hover mode, GTC. So if I click forward on this, you'll just see that the nose drops down a little bit and we get a little bit of movement forward. Very small movement. Now the way that you can see this happening, if you look down here, just look at the runway light below us as a visual guide. So if I click forward there, you can see that we just nudge forward. Okay, back or up, backwards. There we go. And you can also get an idea of how much momentum you carry. So it's a little nudge here in, this is in, um, hover automatic hover mode which is different from uh, ground speed hold okay we can go left here and we can go right here if we click on this button very sort of simple once you're in these modes and you can already see the appeal of the h160 because really flight simulation yes we do want to be there we do want to get that sense of flying the aircraft working the systems and that's what's very good you can't reproduce the kind of feeling of turbulence that you get you know or the machine as it's vibrating around you very difficult to do in a flight simulator but you can reproduce the systems okay so that is your cyclic beat trim here okay we can also increase the altitude you can see alt plus alt minus here in the hover mode so if i just click here you'll see two things happen Okay, just have a look at that green marker that is on the left up here. Okay, if I click Alt, watch what happens to the green marker. Green marker increases, and the aircraft, if we want to take it to uh, 500 uh, feet, will increase. And there we go, you can see us going up. And it will hold there. Okay, so this is linked to the Alt mode here. Okay, and uh, then we can lower the altitude equally. I won't demonstrate that, it's pretty obvious. But the other thing for the um, hover mode is that we can yaw, of course. And you can just see this, it's, it's pretty intuitive here. If we click, you can see a very slight yaw to the right that is then held. Okay, there we go. If you hold on for longer, you get a stronger effect. And the other way as well. 
So these are your collective beat trims and cyclic beat trims that appear in hover and alt mode. Okay, let's just see where else we are going as well. Let's talk about the radio altitude hold. This is uh, somewhat different and if I click on this we may well see that it drops down. Um, if it does, don't worry, you won't get that first time. As I say, the tablet and the autopilot I think has a habit of holding previous settings in it. But there's a difference here. So Alt is a simple um, height above sea level um, altitude hold that is uh, managed by getting your air pressures right to start off with your barometric reference. Okay, that's Alt. Height is different. Height is height above the ground. Okay, and that is done using radio altitude. This becomes really useful if, say, you want to track a certain course and remain, say, 500 foot above the ground. And But don't push the autopilot too far because if you tell it um, and ask it to do something that it can't do um, because you're flying too fast, for example, and it can't make the adjustments, um, you'll just fly into the side of a hill. Uh, but um, height mode, I do really um, kind of enjoy as well. So if I click on height mode, you'll see that it is stuck to the height. You can always see something really interesting here. It's stuck to the height that the helicopter is above the ground. Can you just see that here? Hope you can. So the by pressed height and this button came up here. So this is really, um, this is really interesting um, because of course there's a difference between your height above sea level and your height above the ground. And you can see that discrepancy in the two nine in the 294 because here we have our height at 500 feet above sea level but here we have our height held at 294 foot above the ground which is uh, yeah what you can see here so this readout here is height above the ground this is height above sea level okay so the difference there now again you can change this cr.ht and crht Minus, if I click that, you see, watch the little green marker. Little green marker goes up, much the same, and the aircraft will follow. Now it's looking to maintain an altitude of 400 feet above ground, and it's slowly making that ascent. Once again, I can lower it with uh, CRHT minus, and the hover modes are still in work because we're holding in hover mode. So there we are, and we've just, uh, just approaching 400 feet above uh, ground. There we are, there we are, wonderful, excellent. Let's move on and look at some other options. Okay, so let's look at Alt-A. Bear with me, I'm trying to do it as quick as possible so uh, you're able to kind of uh, get in a flight. Alt-A is a different way of reaching your altitude, altitude acquire. If you click on this button, you'll see that we're already engaged. Now this is altitude above sea level. Okay. Now really what it does is it let you to preset an altitude that you would like to increase to and then you choose when you want to engage it. So if I press Alt A here you'll see this uh, 510 uh, foot um, which is what it will, the height above uh, sea level we are at the moment. You'll see that change and you'll hear Alt A crossing as well. So if I want to go to a thousand feet, or roughly a thousand feet, one thousand ten feet, I got that here, and then I can then press um, engage. So uh, I can close it. There we are. I can return to it. So close there, return to it. When I know I want to increase to a thousand feet, wherever I am travelling, click a thousand, click there, and there we are. You can see Alt A here and it's telling me exactly where it's going to and I've got a sign for vertical speed and alt a that just came up. I've not paid much attention to the upper signals here but you can see the modes appear in green. So there we are we're increasing just at a nice steady rate up to a thousand feet. And equally um, we can uh, move things down. So I can then choose to go to alt a and to lower the altitude, let's say we want to go back down to 400 feet and press engage and down we go.
And the reason that I'm lowering us back down to the ground is I'm just going to demonstrate for us ground speed hold, which is a way of effectively taxiing just above the, uh, the runway or whatever surface you're flying over. And uh, yes, yeah, so we're just making a slow and steady descent here. Looks like there's snow on the hills in Scotland this morning. This is live weather, wouldn't surprise me. Snow was forecast earlier. It's just taking a while to drop down. I'll just pause it and when we drop down to the altitude I'll come back with you. Perhaps one other thing to mention is you can increase the vertical speed. That's come up now. You can increase the vertical speed, uh, although we're pretty much near to where we want to be, uh, by clicking the button VS and lower and pressing that and you'll see a little green line there and that is indicating our speed of descent. What I'm not seeing, just watch out, what I'm not seeing is the altitude I'm looking to acquire. So we'll go back to that and let the um, helicopter do its thing. There we go. So we were at 560, okay so we've arrived there now. So. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is move to radio altitude, so I can close that. So let's go back to radio altitude. It fixes itself on the height that we're above ground. Let's move this right down, shall we, as low as it can go, and as we just have a little bit of a practice and see if we can get it, say, 50 foot above the ground. How how can we do that? Can you see on the again the height is there? Okay, click here as we lower down right here. eighty six eighty four there it is just top here eighty two eighty it's giving me let's see if we can drop down to fifty there we go and it will take its time you can see the altitude dropping down here I'll be interesting to see how the uh, helicopter responds here but we should see it um, stopping just above the ground. There we are, reasonably confident I am. Okay, so there we go. There we go, a little bit lower, let's just see. 30 feet. There we are. Let's have a little cheeky look outside. Okay. Okay, we'll just let that settle. There we are. We're going to look at ground speed hold now and the principle of ground speed hold is much the same as hover but it's this is designed for taxiing. Okay, Once you've mastered ground speed hold and the hover the rest comes really easy. Okay so let's click on GTC here. Okay what we're now doing is that we've got an option. We're not, we are taxiing in effect um, we are holding the height with radio altitude and we can use our um, cyclic and collective beat trims to give us control as effectively taxi just above the ground. So I'm thinking I'm not particularly straight here so let's just click left on the yaw and you can see there uh, and you'll find a little bit more movement in this mode as opposed to the hover mode. Again if we want to move forward click on GTC you see the nose just drop down a little and the helicopter will come forward and this will allow you to taxi and I see improvements in this in the H160 this has always been a fiddly mode for me still is <laughs> as I click to the left here but you can see it's exactly the same principle for your taxiing okay so I can this is a bit like a shimmy to the left here And as you see, I'm moving forward sort of very, very slowly. Now, this is brilliant. It's one of the fantastic things about um, 
using helicopters in Flight Simulator because what it does is allow you to explore all that lovely scenery you bought in the first place. Okay, and uh, helicopters do that and allow that in no other way. I mean, I think there are some micro lights that will let me do that a little bit more, but you can see the control that you can sort of get with this as well. If I click on GTC once more, I can and I hold it harder, you'll find that I can increase my uh, speed as well, even more. Let's click it a bit more. But you get the you get the drift. There we are, we're speeding up a little bit faster now. Let's try it a little bit more. So you need to sort of play about with this. There we are, outside view here. And you can see natu how naturally we would start to shift and think towards takeoff. So I might want to yaw here. Notice how that radio altitude hold is, is helping. Okay. And again, we might want to increase our height now. So if we increase the radio height, up we go. We've got some forward momentum. And you can see on the on the dial here, here's our uh, speed just here. So not hugely, not significantly fast, but let's have a look. Let's firstly get it up to um, some altitude, shall we? Let's, let's, you can hear autopilot flying up. Okay, we're going to increase to about a thousand feet. That's just a thousand feet on radio height. Okay. Right, there's a thousand feet. So we'll just let it. We'll just let things settle there for a moment, and then I'll work, work through uh, these uh, additional modes to you. You're more or less there now, and uh, I'll cover. Go at GA later. That's the automatic, um, uh, automatic takeoff, uh, rearward takeoff as well. Uh, we'll cover that in a later tutorial. But for the moment, just dealing with the autopilot. Okay, let's do one thing at a time. Okay, now the rest is pretty simple. Okay, so if now I've got my my height set at a thousand feet, and so that is following the ground terrain. And I can set uh, a heading. Uh, you can see it's automatically uh, set a heading here. It's look at that green marker down here. Okay, that's the autopilot heading. When we click on heading, that's where it will go because it will revert to where the aircraft is facing when we press the button. Okay, but if we press heading hold here, uh, you'll see that. Uh, the hover mode comes off. Okay, it's maintaining quite a low speed at 40 knots. Ordinarily, you want to be, wouldn't want to be holding speed lower than 40 knots, and the reason for that is that uh, if you lose power, you can't auto rotate down to the ground. It's a dead man's um, sort of uh, dead man zone, really. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but don't worry about it for the moment. So, if we want to change the heading and we want to say go uh, to 30 degrees. And where our heading button is on, you can see I'm clicking heading to the right here, and we're getting a change to heading. Okay, so there we are, and the aircraft moves round. Okay, airspeed um, is all becoming straightforward now, isn't it? If I click on my airspeed, it will hold my initial airspeed. But if I click on IAS here, you'll see the airspeed marker, which is the green marker right here. Now I'm going to go to VY. Okay, and VY is the speed at which you've got the maximum rate of climb. I'll show you why that is in a second. Okay, so I'm going to click on IS and I'm going to increase to VY here, which is uh, about 70 knots. So let's increase, let's move the green button onto the dial here, and you can see this little yellow arrow is saying, yeah, you're increasing. So up we go to VY, which is 70 knots roughly, but there it is, it's next to the VY blue here. There we go, and it will settle. 
Okay, so now we have held our radio height, so we are uh, traversing at a thousand feet above the ground, or should be. We are on a heading hold here of 30 degrees, and we are on a speed hold of uh, VY, which is, well, or 70 knots. Okay? Right. Now, this is where things get a little bit more interesting, um, because... The reason why um, we're holding at VY is that we haven't got anything particularly hilly uh, at the moment. I wonder where the nearest hills are, if there are any. Have got any hills around here? I might have to demonstrate this by going lower. But what VY does is it gives us the maximum rate of climb for the autopilot to work with. Okay, so if you're going over terrain that is uh, undulating... Uh, you're going to have the maximum op chance of the aircraft being able to navigate the altitude rather than flying into the side of a hill. And uh, this does work very well. I'm just in the wrong place to kind of demonstrate it. But nonetheless, let's have a look if we're just trying to fly, fly close to ground. I'm just looking out to make sure we're somewhere where we don't have pylons. So I'm going to just change my bearing kind of across to here. Right. Yeah, doesn't really matter. So just change my bearing... Just looking to where there aren't too many pylons. Perhaps we'll have a look at this. Maybe there's some higher ground up here to the left where the snow is. Take a bearing up here. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my radio height. And I'm going to go probably to 300 feet. Okay. You can see the height just changing here as I press... CRHT Okay, I'm getting a little warning about terrain now. Now what we should find is that you should see the aircraft ascending and descending to hold that 300 feet above undulating ground. We'll see how low we can get, shall we? Okay, and uh, as we're flying here, we should see a little bit more activity once we are once we are at uh, it's just descending still here. Once we get to two ninety, you should see a little bit more activity as the aircraft is following the terrain. So here we go, just near there. And you can see now why VY is so important. Because if I'm flying here at 100 knots and the aircraft can't respond, we're going to end up with a crash. But here we go. I'm just seeing if I can put pressure on the system and illustrate that. I think that's enough to illustrate it, really. So it looks fairly flat around here. <laughs> uh, we'll just hang on for a second and hopefully see the aircraft make some changes uh, for us. Anyway, let's just talk about some of the other options. I think we covered on one of, some of all of these. Okay, and uh, we could just look to these later. VS slash heading and track FPA. This is the difference uh, when you are uh, changing your heading. So if you change the heading bug in this mode at the moment, the aircraft will mainly keep um, flying in the with the, the place that the bug is set. So I'm just, you know, um, what is that, 340, 350 degrees. Um, if I follow track, it will make sure it sticks to the track 350 rather than just flying it because what you've got is that you've got... Um, You've got winds to contend with, for example. So it's a diff slightly different mode here. These NAV1 and NAV2 modes, they relate to uh, the navigation that you've programmed in with your, um, uh, your pre-flight 
uh, down here, which we won't cover right now, but the H145 tutorials on that are really good. It's getting a little bit more hilly here. We should see the aircraft having to make some changes in order to maintain 300 uh, foot or 290 foot above the ground. should see it sort of here. And we should see some increases. Or it may be so efficient it's spotting it well in advance. So, uh, yeah. So, yes. Okay. So, yeah, that's those modes. And... And just finally to end off, I just had to look up something for myself here that I've not seen before. The OEI high and OEI low. This uh, is set automatically to high. It's about the amount of power that can be applied in the hover mode by the autopilot. So high or low there. And um, not sure that we really necessarily need to know a huge amount about that. And uh, I've just managed to uh, click my heading and change that. But you can see I'm just flying nicely here over um, over the hills at low level here in uh, northern Scotland. So I hope that you enjoyed that. Perhaps you're now asking the question, hang on a sec, how do I actually go about flying this thing? Let's do this really quickly, shall we? Can't resist it. So the first thing we're going to do is to bring the aircraft back to a hover. If you press that hover button, then those will come up. The speed will... Uh, decrease. Let's increase our altitude. So we are, you can see that when we moved to hover we moved into out mode here. Let's increase our altitude. You can see the speed is dropping down here. If you just look there we're just dropping down into a hover. Let's just increase our altitude just to a thousand feet, say. I'm clicking on out there. You'll see that if you go outside the range, there we are, the altitude will show there. So there we are. We'll just increase to a thousand feet. Now, the crucial thing when you're flying is uh, do remember firstly, map that um, collective so that when you come off out, uh, you are giving the same amount of uh, power to the engine. Okay? Because you can see there I'm just below. So we'll just see it. it should settle because of where we'd automatically set it, settled it before. But there we are. Okay, so I'm going to take it out of hover mode. There's one thing that's really important and it's called trim release. Okay, when you press trim release what you're doing is in, in ordinarily uh, if you just are flying a heading uh, the uh, autopilot will is running all the time and it's stabilising what's happening in the background. But if you want uh, to manoeuvre the aircraft, you need to use trim relief. You need to tell the autopilot, I'm in control. And there's a manual trim release button here, but you really want to be setting it to a, uh, a button on your controller. Probably the most important button that you're going to have to set, because otherwise you're fighting the autopilot all of the time. So um, if I click, I've mapped mine to my trigger, uh, you can see it says trim release there. Okay, and then back. You can see the stability kick in straight away. So trim release, I'm in full control, and then that's the autopilot just taking over there. So uh, if we um, if we are looking to uh, to fly ourselves, let's make sure we've got everything sorted. Um, we have our power here, which is you can see I could pop it in the wrong place. We make sure that that is on the yellow, and then I'm just going to show you. Um, how to uh, how to fly by uh, by yourself. So let's take off the Alt button here. Uh, let's take off sorry the Hover button here first, and the Alt button. Okay, so we take off the Hover. Okay, and then we take off the Alt button. Everything is settled. We're ready to go. Okay, <coughs> so if we uh, if we click the trim release and just push down on the stick. The front of the aircraft will lower, and you can see a little yellow arrow, a tiny little yellow arrow, that's indicating that we're increasing speed. If I increase the power now, you'll see that the aircraft will begin to increase. You can also see the altitude increasing. And then if I just steer 
take off the trim release and just move the aircraft gives me much more stability. Okay. And what you're going to do is you are balancing the power in the collective, the attitude of the aircraft. So if you dip the nose, you're going to increase the speed, but also you're going to reduce your height, so you need to increase the power. Likewise, if you want to climb, you're going to see the speed increase, so you need to increase the power as well. So if you dip the nose, you're going to have to decrease the power. That's the way it's going to work. So there we are, and I'm just holding on to the trim release here. When I'm settled after a manoeuvre, just release the trim release, and then I can just steer using the stick. So there we are folks, I hope that's okay for you and uh, happy flying and I'm going to get back into uh, hover mode as quick as I can. So there we are and we're hold held at the altitude we were at. Okay, right, take care folks, uh, stay safe. Uh, if you did like this do please subscribe, really important, helps to get to a thousand, that's um, really significant to, to me because all of this is unpaid for. It'd be lovely to get some uh, revenue from YouTube. Just hope you enjoy and uh, this fantastic aircraft. Hope that's just a really good refresher on how to use the autopilot. Take care, folks. Stay safe.